Hey guys, so the iPhone 11 Pro was recently announced and I'm a budget Android phone user, so I don't care. Continuing where I left off in my last video, I've upgraded from an AMD Ryzen 7 1700 to a Ryzen 7 3700X. And generally speaking, I was happy with the upgrade. But does it make sense for first gen and second gen Ryzen owners to upgrade to this third generation of Ryzen processors specifically for gaming with an under 300 US dollar graphics card as their budget. As I said in my last video, for second generation Ryzen processors like the Ryzen 5 2600 and Ryzen 7 2700, the answer is no. If you have something like the GTX 1660 Ti, just save your money and enjoy your 2000 series processor. But what about upgrading from first generation Ryzen processors? Let's find out. Okay, so using my MSI GTX 1660 Ti, I ran a few gaming benchmarks, starting with Ghost Recon's Wildlands, a game I don't actually play, no hate on the game, it's just I never really got into it, but it has a nice built-in benchmark that I wanted to use for this video, and based on the results, I didn't see any difference running the benchmark between the two processors at the different graphical settings at both 1080p and 1440p. Next, I loaded up the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game I do actually play and enjoy, and at first I didn't see any difference between my overclocked 1700 and the 3700X at highest, high, and medium settings for both 1080p and 1440p. Then I tested out low and lowest graphical settings at 1080p, and I noticed I was getting a 12 FPS and 14 frames per second improvement respectively for the average frames per second, and while that's cool and all, nobody wants to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider on those graphical settings. But this made me realize I really had to compare my in-game benchmark performance to get a better picture of what the 3700X upgrade was offering. The average frames per second wasn't a major difference between the two processors at 1080p, where at best I saw a 5 frames per second improvement at medium settings, but those 1% lows had a massive bump in performance, 23 frames per second improvement at medium settings, 20 frames per second at high, and 15 frames per second at the highest settings. I could feel the smoother experience running around the hidden city in Tomb Raider that the 3700X was providing, regardless that the average FPS were similar to the 1700. At 1440p, my GTX 1660Ti was the gaming performance bottleneck, and the difference was nothing worth talking about. Battlefield 5 is next. To be fully transparent with you guys, I'm not sure if the performance difference I found was a result of the game's update when I installed and tested the 3700X. I just don't have the time right now to put my 1700 back into my rig and retest it. I also forgot to benchmark Battlefield 5 on DirectX 12 with the 1700, so these results are a DirectX 11. Combining the frames per second differences between the three graphical settings that I tested, ultra, high, and medium, the average FPS improvement is 7 frames per second at 1080p and 5 frames per second at 1440p, and with the 1% lows, it's 9 frames per second at 1080p and 5 frames per second at 1440p. So even 1440p gets a little boost in performance, with Battlefield 5. Lastly, I tested Witcher 3. Yeah, it's old, but it's the best damn game ever made, so of course it needs to be in this benchmark. Now, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I didn't see any major performance difference at 1440p. There wasn't any major difference for the average FPS either at 1080p, but there was a 7 frames per second improvement on ultra settings, an 8 frames per second improvement at high settings, and a 9 frames per second improvement at medium settings, for the 1% lows. These benchmarks for the 3700X were not performed with the latest BIOS that was released a few days ago for my X370 ASUS Strix-F motherboard, which potentially can improve the performance of the 3700X. But based on the games I've tested, you can decide if this upgrade is worth it for you going from first gen to third gen Ryzen processors with an under 300 US dollar graphics card. While I felt significant gains with the 1% lows with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I see that more of an outlier, and you're really looking at an 8 to 10 FPS improvement 
for the 1% lows playing at 1080p. Now, if you plan on building a brand new Ryzen rig with an under 300 US dollar graphics card, I have two suggestions. If you're on a tight budget, you can save 65 bucks and get a Ryzen 5 2600 instead of the Ryzen 5 3600 and get similar gaming performance. But if you feel that you'll be upgrading to a better graphics card down the line, get the 3600. If you found this video helpful in your Ryzen purchases, affiliate links to these Ryzen processors are in the video description right below that like button. No extra cost to you, but if you purchase these items, with my links, it does help me out with this channel. In my next video, I'll have some Ryzen builds for you guys to look over, so smash that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content to come. That's it for now, I'm out.